Hello everyone, my name is Karen and I'm here today. We're going to talk a little bit about various statistics, etc. We are right now in cycle three and round four. So we're about to finish off the third cycle here. And I thought it would be a good time to talk to the various players and put in some statistics and such of what we have. And let's just start off here with officially saying that Thank you so much to all the players that are participating in this tournament. We're up to 49 players that have come and gone within the tournament. We still have 35 active players. And thank you so much for the dedication to play all the games, for all the new streamers that we've gotten, and all the activity we see in the team channels, or I see in the team channels on the Discord, and as well as all of the discussions. So it seems like the Mordheim community is really flourishing and taking root now and I really really like that. I think uh, in that way this tournament has been a success so far and as long as people are having fun that's just great. Uh, today I was gonna do a little bit of uh, presenting some statistics and then we're gonna have a few interviews with some of the players. So let's just start off. I know this is more mostly interesting for those uh, players that actually do play in this tournament not for all of the viewers but uh, it is what it is. So here is the current uh, warband table right now when they are trying to get the various levels for the warbands by gathering the um, objectives. And as you can see here the undead and the cults of possessed are doing pretty well for themselves. They are already level 5. Witch Hunters is catching up. Skaven is catching up and Sisters and the Mercenaries are a little bit behind. I think that's kind of natural. I mean, it's uh, let's let's take a little look here of uh, some of the other things uh, we have. We also have this list, for instance, which is the amount of objectives that have been scored against the various teams. And here you can see that uh, the witch hunters are the very worst team when it comes to trying to prevent their opponent from getting the objectives, particularly Wordstone Rush for some reason. We do know that they tend to favor heavy armor and so forth, but it seems to be... I think it is a more of a defensive kind of playing style among many of the Witch Hunter players and makes sure that their opponents can just get Wordstone Rush if they want to, and they're not going to prevent that much at all. Contrary to Skaven, who has been really good with preventing various objectives, particularly Wordstone Rush. You can see that their speed probably helps out a lot in that instance. Uh, a little bit of an update, but of course this is... Of, naturally, it depends on how many games you have been playing as a team as well. So if you take a look here, you can see that the Witch Hunters team have played by far the most amount of games. And that does factor into, in, into how many objectives you do give up. It definitely does. From the statistics here, I'm also taking up some walkovers. And I think that also plays a big part. Uh, you can, let's take a look at the games played first here. We have the Witch Hunter 71, Undead 62, Cult 58, Skin 51 and so forth. And that's depending on how many players have been available for the teams throughout all of the 11 rounds that we've played so far. And uh, I don't think it does entirely just this. It's difficult for me as an organizer to get this to be more or less the same. I've tried to do that from the start, but I mean, some players, they did file in that they were gonna do 16 games. It's, they quit after like three games and that has really hurt some teams, while other teams, for example, you know, the Witch Hunters team, they have had both uh, Atreus, or Daddy Coolus is also known as, as well as Jackal, both say that they could only do eight games each and they have pretty much played every single game since. So it does skew the numbers a little bit compared to what people reported when they signed up for the tournament. Of course the walkovers also helps to explain some of these numbers. Like it's not that the sisters have had less uh, games available to them. If you look you see that they gained five walkovers and given away five walkers. So it, in essence, they've had 56 scheduled games so far. And that is uh, more than, for example, the Mercenaries have had, which is uh, 54 scheduled games. So the Mercenaries have been really low on the games. And for 
a few rounds there. I think they only had three active players, so it was really low. And I think this goes a long way to explain why the sisters and the mercenaries are falling behind on the objectives. I do think it's not the whole story. It's part of the story, but I do think that the mercenaries and the sisters, they were taking it very easy with the objectives and they didn't really focus that at the start. And you can see that they still have problems if you look at the various games that you can follow. Don't just follow on my YouTube channel, I just cast a few games. But there are a ton of streamers right now that are broadcasting the various games. You have Kid and Paw, you have Clyde, you have Marlos, you have Greybush. And then you have new players just stepping up to the task as well. I think Lord Raymond, I think uh, Jackal. We have some other ones that just keep doing little streams every now and then. And this is a fantastic thing with the tournament, of course. But yeah, so you can see... From this point on, I think that all of the buys that they give out, a buy is when we have an uneven amount of players that want to play for a given round, then one player doesn't get uh, an opponent and they're given a buy. And I think I'm gonna give that buy to Witch Hunters exclusively from now on. You cannot get a buy unless you've already had one and three Witch Hunters players have already had one so far. So it's gonna be, so one of the other four is gonna get a buy in the remaining five four four games in the remaining four games after uh, the remaining four games of cycle four in case there are uneven numbers so that is it um let us go through with the next set here let yeah let's see here if we just pick off these ones and uh, let us bring up uh, the last one that we had um, the table for the most valuable players as well as the win percentage and the various points getting towards the playoffs. So you can see that there are, of course, four big favorites here. And we'll see if the Sisters and Mercenaries can catch up. Uh, this was uh, this statistic here is from uh, match 10, the one to the, to the left, of course, if after match 11. But uh, I haven't had time to update it, I'm sorry. But here it is. And I do think, I mean, it's... <laughs> Maybe mercenaries can actually pick this up. Uh, we'll see about the sisters. See if they can become a threat uh, in the end of the game here. I do have to say that I did put in something a little bit wrong here for the most valuable player. I have been getting some complaints from this and particularly I think Mala said like, how is this possible? I shouldn't be the most valuable player. Well, you kind of are. The mistake I've made is uh, I have this intricate formula kind of stuff and uh, I, I didn't count one of the Crush the Wheels that Greybush had performed because he did both of his Crush the Wheels against the same opponent, so it was missed. But it should be Greybush that is the most valuable player for the Skaven team. So with that in mind, let's uh, remove that and uh, take a little bit of a look of... Uh, the internal strength of all of the various players. This is something where I base the most valuable player from. And here you can see it's a relative simple system. It's barely a system at all actually, since uh, what you do here is you take one point for the Wellstone Rush, one point for Marked, and for Crush the Will you get four points because one point for Crush the Will and then three points for the level because Crush the Will is so important that it usually means that you level up as a team. And then you have the total amount of points that you have gained. And this is the kind of internal strength that I used to evaluate that statistics that we just saw. Uh, this one, let me bring it up again so we can see it. So it's no surprise here that Chris Shu is the top performing player for the Undead team. The Undead is in grey. Uh, the Witch Hunter team is in orange, the Sisters team is in blue, the Cult team is in purple, the Mercenaries team is in uh, light red here, and uh, the Skaven team is in green. Uh, so you can see that here on the left side. So take a look, there are some little numbers here, 14.03, 14.01, that depends on the values of the different objectives, it's a separating number that comes into effect in my formula. I don't think this is the whole truth, but it's uh, because some 
because you have a win ratio for the whole team, it's difficult to evaluate exactly how much your wins does help the team. So this is just a simple statistic and it's easy for me to do it like this. I didn't want to make another complicated formula that I can mess up with simply because as you know, when it comes to the win ratio uh, on the right statistic here for the whole team, you discount the worst performance in your team. Uh, you're also discounted a bit on uh, all of the players that have left the team. They don't really count anymore, but some of the walkovers and such, they do still count towards the win ratio. Uh, anyway, but I think that there's another way to evaluate this because this is just a positive way. This is just a positive evaluation for how well you are performing. I think what is missing from this is uh, how many objectives you're letting through as well. And I think that is more of a real strength for players. So let's take a look at that. If we do add in the amount of, um, let's see, where do I have that? Here we go, real strength. So if you take a look at uh, the objectives that you have given up, so if you have given up a marked for death, you have given up a uh, worst and rush, they each minus one point. If you've given up a crush, that's minus four points. If you, it's the same kind of similar statistic as you do when you get the objectives. Using this, you can reevaluate exactly where players end up. And uh, this would be the real strength meter of how good you're actually performing in the tournament. And to a big surprise, it still Chris you on the top. Like he's really crushing it, to say the least. He has three crushed wills and he's been doing a lot of good stuff with uh, the objectives. Here. You can see he's taking five objectives out of those three are crushed wills. That's very impressive for Chris Yu. And it means that he's the top player. We also have Anior shadowing him from the undead team. So top two players are undead players so far. You have the Nashi, Kid and Paw. You have a lot of these players are kind of captains. Anior, Nash, Nashi, Kid and Paw, Hole Poker, etc. They are team captains. So it's not surprising that they are doing that well. But it is surprising that Christian is doing so well as he is. Um, do we have any more real surprises here? I think. Uh, We'll talk a little bit more about the various players as we go into the various um, team chats here. So let's start doing that. Let's uh, move on here to something else. We'll start with uh, let's start with the witch hunters. We have the witch hunters objectives. Let's bring them up. We can also take out the witch hunter strength ca card, and this is from the real strength. You can see that. Uh, they are a very well-rounded team. They have seven players that are playing really well at the moment and they are all playing all their games. I think that is the most important thing. They have the most games played. We saw that earlier. So they're doing really well in that department and they have a very even team. They are a little bit in the middle, top middle, upper middle kind of way with uh, how they are doing so far. If they can uh, maybe get Quist going, I think that would be a big help to the team. He is one of the players that would have been expected to take some kind of objective by now. I think he was the seed number. He was the seed number two here for the Witch Hunters team. And now she's the team captain. And I think most players would have expected him to do better than he has. Still haven't gotten a single objective, but he's lost a, quite a few objectives against him. And that's why he has zero points right now in the real strength department here. But hopefully he can improve. I think that uh, Valentine, he, he started out pretty well, good as well. He's been growing as of late, picked up a late crush the will, which amounts to most of his points. That helps put him in the middle here of the evaluation. And Ashley always doing well, of course. Jackal doing really well, missing out on the objectives, but winning a lot of the games. Sassy Assassin being one of the big surprises for the uh, Witch Hunters team, I think. I don't think most people have seen how good he has been playing. He's playing with a full armor warband and he's doing it really well. I think I have one game on my YouTube channel, for instance, that you could take a look at. And hopefully Atreus can uh, get going here in the lower part of uh, 
the table. I think he only has one real win. I think that one is from... Uh, yeah, I think that one is from um, a walkover. So hopefully he can shape up and become a little bit better. And with us here today, we will have actually Valentine speaking for the Witch Hunters team. So let's see what he has to say about all of this. So hello, my name is Valentine and I play Mordheim, I must confess. <laughs> Hi Valentine. So we were just talking a little bit about the Witch Hunters team and how well they've been performing. Um, there's one glaring statistics that's put uh, out here for the Witch Hunters team is that you guys seem to be dropping a lot of Worldstone Rushes. Like, um, I think we have 27 Worldstone Rushes being given away in the tournament so far and 12 of those are given out by the Witch Hunters team. Do you, do you know why that is? Do you think have any idea? Well, uh, I guess I got some ideas, but I can, t I can only tell for myself actually because uh, I'm not sure about the others and I do not have uh, all these stats that you do have. Uh, I personally when I play against weird stone rushers uh, I do not really try to stop them from rushing for the weird stone. I'm just trying to set up for the best position to shoot at them and then to ambush them. But usually it means that you are giving up a lot of map because, uh, I mean, witch hunters are not all that quick. And until recently, I didn't really have uh, all that much speed. Like my uh, Templars were, were five speed and stuff like that. and only currently I have seven speed on all my uh, heavy armor guys. So that's the main problem. I cannot control the map efficiently. Mm -hmm. All right. How, how, what do you feel about the team spirit in the team? I see it, you're one of the most talkable, uh, talkative teams in the Discord chat. I can say that. And you're talking a lot about tactics and scouting out your opponents and so forth. And how, how does it feel to be part of the Witch Hunters team? Well, it's actually really great. And honestly, uh, looking at other teams, I'm not sure how talkative they are because they do not have access to their chats, obviously, unlike you. Uh, but I can tell that it is nice to have such a team leader as Nanashi because he's streaming, he's talking, he's sharing his builds with us. And I mean, it's not necessary that we are all using the same builds, but it's always nice to see how others think about uh, similar characters as yours. Uh, it's nice to see different uh, like warband compositions and to know that you are not that bad or that your warband have uh, has certain weaknesses and stuff like that. So, I mean, that's fun. And also, it's really nice that we have such an international team, uh, like as we do, because Nanashi is French, I am from Ukraine, Jekyll from Russia, and so on and so forth. So it's really nice to have this kind of a team. Yeah, it's been being really nice to follow you guys. I know that you talked a lot about and supporting each other throughout the losses and the wins and so forth. And you've been really good at, uh, especially Jackal, are scouting out all of the maps and even supplying that resource to the rest of the modern community. It's a really nice thing. Well, yeah, Jekyll seems like a guy uh, who never talks too much, but he thinks a lot and he's obviously preparing for every specific games games of his and he was uh, the very person who wanted to create these maps with the deployments as you remember that we are currently using and uh, and not only us i believe that other warbands other teams uh using them as well oh yeah they definitely are i believe they are um how are you preparing for the playoffs well to be honest i didn't really even think about uh, the playoffs currently because I mean I am not uh, I'm not really sure how it's going to play out because uh, I mean I have always been uh, very bad with the uh, with all these systems like uh, Swiss system and like tournament uh, lists I, I do not really understand how that works so I didn't really think about the playoffs and I'm not sure how they will be playing. So yeah. if you could shed some light. That's completely true. That, that's, uh, I, I will, 
I'm, I'm trying to figure out a good system right now. I'm, I'm trying to make sure that everyone who wants to play in the playoffs can play in the playoffs. But, you know, there's a little bit of an uneven numbers between the various teams. Like, you have seven active players right now. Many of the other teams only have five. So how do I organize that so that everyone gets to play? And I think we're going to do a limited amount of games, like two rounds, and uh, then the objectives is still going to count for something. It's going to count for points that you rack up between the teams. Yeah, that would be great because, um, to be precise, if we look at the sisters, they didn't really do well uh, from the beginning with the objectives. And currently, when we have developed teams, uh, when we do not have such a downer as a as an absence of the armor proficiency as it used to be. So uh, many teams can catch up because, for example, Skaven, they were good throughout the whole tournament with the objectives. And I'm not sure if they were the first uh, to reach high levels. I mean, there were also Chaos guys who were really good as well. Yeah, they, I think the Skaven team has been really impressive considering the amount of games that they've been playing and they were really fast with leveling up that's true but i think it's also easy to say for you as a witch hunters player the witch hunters have played if i don't count any walkovers you have played 71 games and the sisters have only played 46 you know so it's 25 more games you have had on you to get to your objectives compared to the sisters so of course that should factor in don't you think uh, well, probably, but also I can tell that sisters, they prefer, well, I should not call it camp, but usually that's how sisters play, because when they get this magic thing, they are like pre uh, preferring to stay in how this and shoot at people. Well, I'm not trying to offend anyone. <laughs> that's just how they play. Yeah, that's fine. I, th I think a lot of players would say the same about the witch hunters in some respect. But, um, I mean, I, th I think that, that would be maybe why you're giving up so many words on rushes, because you're a bit slow of a team. Yeah, yeah. That's, what I, that's what I said uh, at the beginning. It's rather difficult to be quick when you have so much heavy armor and you, sh you have these shooty guys. Uh, so you prefer to shoot as much as you can before you actually clash with your opponent. Yeah, indeed. What, what has been... Um... Do you have do you have any questions or anything you want to bring up be, before we leave you? Oh well, I'm not sure if I have any questions currently. I mean, any everything's any, clear. Any observation? Is there something that you would like to have improved in the tournament, or if there's something uh, rules-wise, or any ideas that you have, or? Well, or, or honestly, you, 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 you can also just send, you know, a taunt to one of the opposing teams if you want. Well, it's difficult to taunt someone when you lose your uh, last couple of matches, to be precise. So <laughs> uh, I, I can't say that that I would like to taunt someone. I can just say that it, it becomes really difficult to play. I mean, uh, until the last game, I didn't really um, like perceive uh, the mercenaries as a strong warband. But I was proven otherwise when I was outclassed and outdone in my last game. So, hmm. good job, guys. <laughs> do, do, you, do you think that uh, the level 5 reward, once you get it, that it will be a big game changer for you and your team? Well, uh, I don't think so, honestly. Because, I mean, all those rewards, they are nice and cool, but I do not really feel like they change a lot to me personally. I mean, I'm not sure about the others, but I don't feel that it's going to be a game changer. I can tell you that from uh, the, the private uh, warband strategy channels of the other warbands, they all hate your firebombs. Oh, uh, well, they should, because once we find those purple ones, it's going to be a nightmare. Yeah, it's going to be. I mean, it's extra damage. It's a lot of extra damage. I have a, one final question. Because okay. I did cast one of your games uh, here last, and I have a question. Why do you have your firebombs on your Templars? Uh, well, that's pretty simple. My Templars cannot disengage. So it means that they're going to stand there and fight multiple guys, most likely. I mean, it's, it's going to be either henchmen or heroes. So this additional damage that I can dish out really helps. 
All right. Well, thank you very much, Valentine, for being with us. Thank you. Talking about the Wish Time um, Team. Uh, I will see you in the streets of Mordheim. Yep. Good, good luck in the cycle four. Thanks. See ya. See ya. All right. That was Valentine talking a little bit about the team. Let's uh, quit with the Witch Hunters and uh, take a look at the next team here, which is going to be the Skaven team. And uh, let's start out with the same thing as we did with the Witch Hunters team. We see their current progress here. You see that they are lacking one crush their will currently to get to level five. And here we have the internal strength. And uh, Greywish has been doing really well. I think uh, as lo when it comes to the team captains, I don't think that uh, Ranger has not been as present as many of the other captains, but Greybush has definitely picked up uh, the slack here. And Raritor, Greybush, they've all been excellent at teaching and uh, educating all of the Skaven players that have gone through the team. There have been several players in the Skaven team, but some of them have faded out of the tournament, but they did a great job helping them and motivating them as best as they could. And then they had the two new players coming in here, Albro and Ron85, as well as Slavior. And Slavior is a beast, of course, we know what he can do. He's undefeated so far in the first three games. And Albro has been one of the big successes of the tournament, I think. His uh, Rat Dogger has surprised a lot of players and he has taken down team captains and he's been causing havoc all over the place playing really well and he's had very tough opposition he still has a very good amount of points so i think that's impressive for him ron 85 is stepping up here he got his warband remade in the middle of the tournament he was a quite a bit behind and i think he's gonna turn it around a little bit and the graybush of course doing well particularly with uh, casting the various games but doing well as well so we said that with the Witch Hunters that they were doing, that Skaven were doing really well considering how many games that they have been playing and that is certainly true. I think it is the Warband that's gained the most objectives in the least amount of games. And maybe that's due to the speed, maybe it's due to something else. Um, I think we should start talking to one of the players here of the Skaven team, which is going to be the top performing player, Greybush. Hey, this is Greybush. Hello Greybush, nice of you to be here with us. So we've been talking a little bit about the Skaven team and if there's something the Skaven team seems to be great at, it is uh, preventing the objectives for their opponents. You have been the best in that throughout the entire tournament. And uh, do you have any suggestion of why this is? Do you talk a lot about this in your team chat? Uh. Well, not really, but no. it's probably because Skaven are basically the quickest warband. We have a chance to you know, run down uh, flag carriers, and if uh, we get a wounded unit, we can pull them back quite easily. Yeah, I mean, you have. Um, I mean, you have only lost. Uh given up one objective yourself the same for ron 85 and slaver and albro the other two active team members have not given up anything it's just uh, raritor giving up two normal objectives and then uh, crush their will as well but that's all it is uh, that's not bad yeah and it's uh, i mean you've been really good as well because considering that when it comes to the total amount of games that uh, Skaven have been playing, you are by far the best uh, ones at getting the objectives in the least amount of games. So you're pretty good at that as well. Do you think it's all due to the speed or...? Uh, well, we've been focusing uh, very heavily on objectives. We've been discussing uh, what to do and who goes for what, what we take first and who will take... Uh over after that when does uh if i go for crush their will and i manage to get it someone will try to go for uh hang on cat someone will try to go for mark for death or whatever we need next so yeah yeah i've been i've been looking at it and you also have more than that you have some tactics of how to get it and so forth do you think that the team spirit and you know the talking that you've been going through in the team chat has been a, a positive experience for you guys. 
yeah, it's made the tournament more interesting and it's uh, helped us just coordinate and uh, be more focused. Yeah, you've been really focused. It's been really good so far. Do you, do you think you'll make it to the playoffs, the Skaven team? You're being hunted. Yeah, I think we will. At least, uh, at least a few of us. No, you will all get there. You either get there as a whole team or you don't get there at all. Four best teams. Oh, well. Then we'll get there. <laughs> yeah, you're currently in fourth place uh, to get towards the playoffs. Uh, Sisters and the Mercenaries are hunting you. Um, what would you say have been... Uh, do, do you have any suggestions for any rule changes? Or do you think anything has been particularly good for this tournament? Or anything like that? Any ideas, maybe? <laughs> uh, well, uh, this is the one that's been discussed a lot about the uh, voluntary routing and when it's okay to voluntary route or abandon a match. Yeah, yeah. And, I, uh, I know a lot of players. I want think. To... Uh, I think. Yeah, I, I mean, I like uh, the way uh, Game Night's done it in Blood. I don't know, Buddyhood uh, League, mm -hmm. where uh, you simply can't but i know for some people that's very annoying yeah that you can't uh, yeah. yeah exactly because you're yeah. held you're held in the game longer than you might enjoy yeah so i know for some people that's really annoying but uh i think at least for routing or abandoning should be limited to the player's turn if nothing else yeah it would be a very good rule and I'll see what we can do about that. I, I mean, I agree with it. I just didn't rule it like that because many players have had difficulty following the rules as they are. And uh, I mean, that's been, you know, when I went through and uh, did a scan of any cheating or rules breaking in the Skaven team, I found, <laughs> found quite a bit as well that we needed to correct. So a lot of players, they just... They don't get everything, and they don't maybe don't read everything, and they don't, didn't want to deal with the whole issue of what happens if you do just route or leave or alt F four. Ah, uh, well, you know, we're skater. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's not specifically towards Skaven. I can say that uh, every single team that I have investigated so far has had some sort of uh, rules breaking within them that I we've had to correct. Which is why it's important that I try and get all the teams before the playoffs. Yeah, I can understand that. I mean, uh, I've noticed a lot of people uh, sort of miss some of the rules, forget about them. Yeah, even if I'm trying to make them as simple as possible, it still misses out some somewhere. Uh, what do, you, what do you think about your experience in the game so far? You're the top uh, performing Skaven player right now. Uh, at least according to the, the, the strength of uh, how many objectives you completed and your win ratio and the amount of objectives you have lost, etc. Do you have any comments on that? I mean, you have been the leader for a little while here now. Ever since you took the last uh, Crush the Wheel here against Fenrir. You took both of the Crush the Wheel against Fenrir. These are the only objectives you've taken, but still. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I've enjoyed it. I mean, I've played uh, very differently than I normally would. If uh, there wasn't any uh, big focus on objectives, I probably would have focused more on... But I've been very focused on objectives and uh, kind of taking big risks and sacrificing a bit. Yeah, you, but, had, you, had, an uh, amaz you had an amazing game here recently. Was it against... Uh... Marlos, where you had the objective and then lost it in the very last uh, second? Yeah, that was... Uh, I lost uh, the objective and the game, actually. <laughs> yeah, that, that, was, that was just unbelievable. I don't really know what happened in that game. It was a fantastic well, as soon game. As he got his, uh, as soon as he got his idol back and my idol, he only needed to kill one unit to get me to take a route test. Did he get and it, it would have been the same if I'd kept it. If I'd if I'd kept the damn uh, the damn idol, it would have been the same for him. I'd only need. Yeah, and I think it was, so it was with uh... 
summoned a, a doom weaver that had like four wounds left remaining or something like that as well yeah and uh the overwatch shot missed <laughs> yeah <laughs> well it's a, kind of a an amazing turn of events it was uh, a very fun game a lot of your games have been kind of fun yeah uh, how, how do you feel about it, about your playstyle yourself? Do you feel that uh, you've had a ha, had a good time with the warband? Do you have you built specifically to try and get uh, objectives with your warband? Yeah, kind of. Uh, there, I've built my warband mostly around uh, sort of um, hit and run. So I have uh, the standard uh, warp guards ready to, you know take some hits and uh, block paths, and mostly uh, ranged otherwise. Yeah, yeah, I, I have been seeing uh, quite a few of your games, and you do play a very skirmishy style, something that <laughs> has been a little bit aggravating for some of your slower opponents, but they do have armor, don't they? Yeah, and I don't have armor penetration, so yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it's all even, I mean... Of course, it should be an advantage to being lightly armored and having a good initiative and so forth. Of course, that should factor in. It shouldn't just be only armor. Even if uh, I think a lot of pay players said before the tournament that uh, armor would still be the most important feature. But uh, I think your warband has helped to prove that it's not all about armor all the time. Kind of like that. Yeah. I mean, uh, the advantage... Uh... With Skaven on range, there's, they have uh, already a very high base movement. So you can get uh, quite a bit of positioning with your ranged and focus down one target. Yeah. So... Uh... Like, um, like actually I did with... Uh, I think it might have been Fenrir when, yeah. uh, in our first match. When the first round was me basically running up and... Uh, Already uh, wounding and uh, crippling his vampire and uh, a few other units. Yeah, he has been talking about those two games, saying it has been pretty unlucky with the deployments, I believe. But uh, do will you be the player to get Skaven their final crush the will here to get level five? I'm gonna try it. It's gonna be a uh, next match. Is gonna be on Quay sides. We'll see how what uh, what setup and deployment we get. Yeah, yeah. I, ho I hope it's. Uh, well, yeah, exactly. We will see. We'll see. Uh, Quayside can be very interesting, especially if it is uh, the deployment here where you get um, everyone starting in melee, more or less. Seven out of ten units start in melee. Yeah, I'm kind of hoping for that actually. Yeah, I, I think most of your <laughs> teammates that have played Quayside they've gotten the rival in the ruins kind of deployment though. I think all of them have actually. Yeah, I think that would actually be uh, an advantage for me, though. Yeah, with all of your ranged. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, if it's war on uh, waterfront, I think uh, the um, I think I'll have some units closer to uh, his um, idol. So. Do you think it's uh, has it been a good reward for the gaming team overall? You think even if you haven't played Quayside yourself, do you think it's been a good reward to have Quayside for the gaming team? Because you, if you do get level six and seven, you might get more Quaysides here. Yeah, I think it's an okay reward. It's a new map and it's a very sort of skirmishy map, so it does fit the gaming very well. Yeah, it's kind of thematic as well. I think it's the most gaming map we can. We can have here yeah in, in the tournament as well all right Greybush, is there something else you want to mention before we leave you by uh, no nothing i can think of really well i wish you and your team uh, good luck here hunting for the playoff spot and keeping the jackals at bay and uh, hopefully you will do really well in the playoffs as well and cycle four before that yeah. Thank you so much for being here with us. See you in the streets of Mordheim. Yep. All right, so that was Greybush of the Scheming Team. Let's go onwards with the next one that we do have. I think we have the Undead coming up. And as usual, let's just drop in here with the Undead Objective. 
And there we go. So, the Undead team. They are doing fantastic right now. They are the number one ranked team and they have the best two players among them. As well as far as player strength goes. Christian and Anir, both very dangerous. Anir being the team captain. And then they have uh, Chris Cardiac as the second seed here who... Um, has been a little bit uh, surprising here in the last uh, few games, but he's picking it up. You have King Jiggy who haven't really given away any objectives, but he also hasn't get gotten any, and hopefully that can change. And then you have Fenrir and Bubs. Bubs was have really bad luck in Fenrir as well. Most of the objective points lost here for Fenrir is double crush the will, minus eight, and that's uh, very unlucky games against uh, Greybush twice. Um, so the other team is a little bit uneven. They have lots of play some players in the very bottom of the league and some of the very top here. And uh, but they did were they were the second team to reach level five and they've been doing well with the level five reward. And I think they're gonna leverage that to their advantage. So let's uh, bring up uh, two voices actually for the undead team, being Chris Chu, the number one ranked player, and Fenrir, the thirty fourth ranked player. I am a rat. No, wait, no, I'm not a rat. I'm a corpse. Fuck. And I'm Fenrir. Yeah, and the previous one was Chris Chu, unless you <laughs> missed that somehow. So, hello, guys. Thank you so much for coming and talking to me and uh, doing this interview. Pleasure to be here. Great. Guys, so what is the real strength of the Undead team? Like, you're the top-ranked team right now. You're the guys to beat. Uh... I have no idea how that happened. Um, my entire experience in this tournament so far has been the confused, screaming, uh, filthy Frank meme. <laughs> I, I, I think you're supposed to go, it's the team effort. We're coming together as a team. We're working to enhance each other's skills. and We're really trying hard to, to communicate how to improve our it, it's is that laying it on a little bit too thick? No, I think I think you're right on. I think you're very lucky to have Anir. I think uh, out of all of the team captains so far in, in the Discord chat, I said he's very active for you guys, and he's always very cheerful and helping everyone be motivated and playing well and congratulating you all on your victories or helping you out. I think uh, that's kind of the team spirit that I see with Undead, and that that might be one of your biggest strengths. What do you think? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, he has uh, been an absolutely amazing captain. Aner, if you're watching this, love you, buddy. And uh, I just have to commend him for managing to convince me to get, uh, what's it say, some insult on my crypt horror. Normally, I would not have done that, but it has proven to be useful. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. I just wish that Aner would, um, I don't know how, how, how you could say this, um, like, Send the message in in shorter texts because I've had like three uh, <laughs> private messages from Aner and it's basically like ten pages in, in <laughs> text for the text god. Oh yeah, I, I I've seen that on your chats. I mean, Aner is by far the captain that has producing walls and walls of text in your chat. It's unbelievable. He's he's just a fountain of information and he just puts in everything. <laughs> Normally, yeah, I, I, I mean, in, normally I'm the person in the group who just spams walls of text, but as I'm not as versed in more time, Aner has taken over that position. Yeah, we love, we love the guy. Just get to the fucking point. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> so you guys, you you have a little bit of an uneven team between you. A lot of the other teams, they're a little bit even in their strength. You have. Chris Chu here, who is the number one ranked player in the entire tournament right now. Wait, so, the, the, how, when? Hands up for that, Chris Chu. Well, you have been doing it, you have most points out of any player for your objectives, and you have also only let uh, a single uh, objective go through you. So you Wait, have been doing mean, really well for yourself. You mean tell me no one has got an objective from me? One player has gotten one objective from you. Uh, yeah, that one time with uh, a sister's player. Which one was it? Uh, uh, sh it was a slow... A shell, a shell proof. Yes, I think it was shell proof. He managed to get his uh, word stone. 
off of me. Yeah. Uh, on the contrary, then, we have V Fenrir. You are ranked uh, 34th right now. You've been letting through some of the objectives. We talked a little bit about this privately and previously as well with the Skaven that you have been very unlucky against the Grey Bush, which has given you this this dismal result. Yeah, but, um, um, but somebody has to drag the team down because otherwise we're just going to fly up there and everybody's going to gonna be afraid to face us. Well, uh, then you're technically not doing a good job because the team is flying above everyone else. I'm working on it. It, it's also because we are discounting the worst result out of any players, so we are discounting Fenrir's results. Ah. More or less. As long as Fenrir keeps being the worst performing undead player, his results won't count. See, I'm I'm doing good work here. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you have won a you have won a surprising amount of games, haven't you? More than you thought you would before. Yeah, I, I I I think I have three wins. That's about three more than I thought I would. That is as much as I thought I'd get on the Buddyhood Brawl League 3. Because this tournament right now is the second Mordheim tournament I've been part of. The first one being the BBL 3. I've had much more success on this one than the previous one. And I think it's... um In the BBL 3, I decided to go for style points and build my warband thematically. In this one, I've just gone, okay, now let's game the stuff. Yeah. Speaking of gaming... You guys were really cheeky. I, I can say that now because it's too late for the other teams to follow through, but I know that your team captain uh, re-rolled his warband to start for a, an excellent shop. I think he got six or seven really good purple items. And then, unlike any of the other teams, he shared that file with you so you could all start with it. But I don't think any of you two did, did you? No, uh, I haven't restarted my warband. I, I actually didn't re-roll. Oh, you didn't even reroll. All right. Uh, um, I, I got a starting shot with, I think it was a purple hammer, a purple staff, and a purple, no, a blue heavy armor, and I went with it. No, oh, it's okay. It's a good start. I mean, you, you don't want to reroll too many times. We have different other things to do, right? No, it, well, ba basically, the perfect uh, the purple staff uh, decided whether or not I was going to use the necromancer because originally I wasn't. I didn't really see the idea of the necromancer, but that that unit has basically been the uh, powerhouse of my. To be fair, if I had gotten a purple staff, I would have sold the thing. The only wizard uh, in the game that I actually value at all is the Doom Weaver. I, I, as evidenced in my game against Yarok, uh, that was uh, one or two games ago, I do not like the chance of getting the quadruple nines. <laughs> yeah, the 999, the dreaded one. We don't have too many players had had that so far in the PvPs, but there have been a few. And even with the Doomweaver, I still don't like the staff. I don't like it. I would just rather slap, him, slap it with an axe and a shield. And hope I'm looking forward to that purple shield with the shield uh, with the um, shielding uh, enchantment, yeah. because when you the Doomweaver has this uh, one passive ability that's unique to it that increases its melee and range resistance. When you master that and you combine that with a shield of shielding, it becomes basically unhittable. Like we're talking 30% hit chance at yeah. rank 10. Stacking that with awareness and the shield specialist as well, right? And what specialist? Uh, shield specialist. No, I, passive wise, I only I go for the getting me more spells slots stuff. All right. And basically boost, yeah, basically that. Skill wise, I'm I still uh, if you have like about fifteen minutes for me to log into more time to my Skaven warband, I'd be happy to tell you what I use on Doom Weavers, but. Um, no, I just build it, build him as a dodge tank that is hard to hit, who's also a support healer with the uh, blood idol. Do you guys feel that? Oh, I mean, have you both tried to build your warband a little bit towards getting the objectives, or not really? I think uh, basically going into this, I wasn't expecting to win much, so I was just building my warband to survive the matches. Um, I, the, the mindset was if I could deny the opponent the objective, which hasn't gone as well as I wanted, um, I could at least pull off a win maybe once or twice. I was basically trying to copy the Skaven Warband that I beat the Skaven campaign with. Uh, 
Impressive, Doomweaver, and uh, Poison Wind Globadier. And basically, that is the main thing. That is the core component of my warband that I was trying to get. Then there's just the fact that, uh, in the case of the undead, the leader is just awesome. Vampires are amazing. Have you seen my bad boots? <laughs> <laughs> um, and in terms of the henchmen, while not as durable as the Skaven, uh, I do get oh, at least uh, technically yes, they uh, the undead uh, uh, henchmen also not as maneuverable. They are still quite useful in the fact that they can run around a lot, and they can also bog down stuff very easily. I don't care what people say. Zombies are awesome. I love zombies, and they. I don't even need the Van Hell buff to give them speed. They're awesome on their own. I mean, uh, yeah. yeah, go on. Keep it, it, if if you if you really want to take your time with it, you don't need the Van Hell buff for the zombies because zombies will get in, in insanely tanky. Um, but 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 really, I think ghouls are the harder of the uh, of the henchmen to use right. Uh, since they can't disengage again. If they, if ghouls could disengage, undead would be freaking up. Yep. Uh, but sadly, they are uh, soft and squishy and don't like to move a lot once in combat. About the ghouls, that is. But about the zombies specifically, when you have the deployment preferences that I have, you don't need the buff, or the speed buff. Uh, can I ask you guys some questions here? Let's see. I mean, Fenrir, mostly to you here. I know you had a bit of a bad luck with uh, Greybush, but the Undead team has been the team that's let through most crush their wills. Do you think it's something about uh, Undead as a faction that uh, makes it difficult to prevent crush? Um, I think it's it, it's it's a, it's a warband uh, build because if you build like me, I only have the one zombie and uh, and and the necromancer really that that's able to disengage from a fight and run away. Uh, everybody else usually gets bogged down or or held in some way. Um, so I don't really have the maneuverability to go and defend an idol if it's getting taken. Uh, now, if I have to take my idol with me, that character immediately becomes a target and uh, then again undead with ghouls aren't really the melee focused warband that can defend a character carrying the idol mm -hmm. right. so i think that, that that that's a lot of the issue there is that you can't really if you're using ghouls uh, primarily you can't defend your idol and if you bring it with you you can't defend it on the move uh, question how, how, how many zombies and ghouls do you have in your team well, I have two zombies and three ghouls. I like to have a nice balance. Uh, this is uh, something which I deviate from the Skaven template that I have, because in my Skaven warband, for example, I have four warp guards and one uh, uh, one uh, verminkin for that extra range support. Uh, but um, due to the lack of maneuverability of the ghouls once inside of combat, that is why I uh, opted for the two zombies. Because, um, see, that is also one of the ways I personally deal with um, protecting my idol. Uh, y you get two zombies. In this case, I due to how uh, my PVEs worked, uh, some of them died. So I had to wait for uh, cycle three when I could buy uh, more leveled up. I have one zombie that is rank eight. He go, uh, Mr. L. Bundy. He goes into fight. Uh, my level three zombie, which is still working up the ranks, at Kuzudui. Uh, he is left on top of the um, actual idol to block it, because while they can't move a lot, they are hard to move out of a place. Uh, that's the thing I love about zombies. So just grab a zombie, deploy it next to your cart. Put him right next, right on top of the idol thingy, Bob. Parry, you done deal. Um, that's a good thing for preventing the objectives. What would you say has been your success with getting the crush the will? Because you're the one who, you're the only player who has three crush the will at the moment. Would have been four, but I'm not going to bring that up. <laughs> um, um, what has well, timing and luck? I would say. Uh, because um, you do have to get into that sweet spot. 
mostly I am trying to gain the initiative order with my crit horror. As uh, many people have seen, I have a spear on him, so he has high initiative at the very beginning, out initiating practically anything. I grab that, uh, get him to engage the, mo uh, the most dangerous target currently available on the field, of sometimes either another impressive or a very particularly dangerous hero. And uh, basically, I kind of use him as a lure. See, I am fighting your something very important for you, and my thing is going to wreck it. So come deal with it, and that kind of gives me an opening to have my ghouls, who are, while they do get bogged down when engaged, they are particularly fast little buggers. So just zooming in, also because they have high initiative, grabs the thing, runs back. Alternatively, I think the only exception to this has been my first uh, game where I get got the um, uh, Creditor Will against a Chaos Warband. Uh, that one was, I think, a misplay on my opponent's end because instead of uh, doing what I do with my zombie and just putting him on top of the idol and parrying, he put it near the he put a unit near his idol and got made an ambush. So I just moved a unit outside, triggered the ambush, then had my Doomweaver, who as a hero has a lot of movement points, just goes in, takes the thing, and runs back inside the house. Uh, and lastly, so the cornerstones of why I'm able to look, positioning, uh, and the last thing would be my preferable, uh, my uh, preference for deployments, I would say. All right. Do you guys feel that, uh, I mean, how, how do you feel that your uh, team rewards have worked out for the team in general? Do you feel that they have been useful compared to the other teams? Is this something that you have planned out with your warbands a little bit, with the rewards in mind, or how does it work? I know that uh, just as we are talking about this, you're well on your way to the level 6 reward and the middle bridge again. Uh, since Bubs managed to get uh, Wordstone Rush for you guys, I believe. He's a damn trooper. Yeah, but how, but how, how do you feel about the, the rewards in general for the Undead team? Well, you go first, Fenner, because I will be talking a lot on that. Um, well, I'm going to touch on one of the points that I know Chris was going to say. Uh, the Horrors of Mordheim reward absolutely sucks. <laughs> yes. Very. Um, I tried it just because we had it. I had to try it. Um... I, I, I was like I was lucky enough for my opponent to pick Horrors of Mordheim and though it says you're never scattered, you're still divided into three groups. Actually, um, you get to uh, pick your starting position. You get to decide if you're scattered or not. Yeah, but, but I'm I'm never scattered the the way that that's set up. But it, it doesn't really matter. I I was split into three groups. My opponent was the one that was supposedly scattered. Uh he got to crowd his wagon within one so that's how much scattered he was. But why didn't you take a hint? Why didn't you get uh, become the scattered in your next game then when you pick Horus of Mordheim? Um, I just gave up on the reward. I was like, if that's the way the, the scatter works on this deployment, then it, it's not really... Uh, usually, uh, I pick scavengers. Scavengers is my go-to uh, deployment because that really works for me. Yeah. What about you, Christian? What do you feel? Um, uh, the leaders consumables, the taking away a hero slot for you and your uh, opponent, etc. Before I just, I just want to, because I don't quite understand reward number five. So before a PvP, I decide to remove a slot. So that me, uh, what exactly does that mean? Does that mean that uh, I can still bring an impressive while I deny a hero slot to the opponent, or? Yeah, the, the way the way I read it, and I'm going to be using it this uh, Wednesday, I think it is, versus uh, Granar Granas. Um, I, I, I'm going to be playing on Middle Bridge because I need to use that reward. And um, we're, we're going to be using reward number five where I get to ban one hero slot. So I'm going to remove a hero, he's going to remove a hero. I'm going to be able to put in a rank zero henchman in that hero slot instead. Uh, so, just to confirm, if I use reward number 5, I don't get to use my impressive, correct? Yeah, you, you do get to use your impressive and one hero. And one hero, okay, uh, you know. My warband, at the very core of the warband is the impressive and the two heroes I have, so that reward is something that I will never be using. Also, in the case of that we can uh, 
pick our deployment on Horrors of Mordheim. I don't like either deployment on that map, because uh, anything that divides my warband into three, if that is, I avoid that like the plague. It is awful. And even if I am the one scattered, because I normally prefer, like that kind of thing, the fact that the enemy is so split up when I'm scattered, I can't really cope with that very well. So those two are essentially, in my personal case, I speak for myself, I don't speak for anyone else, the rewards on uh, rewards number two and number five feel just like uh, we just got them for the sake of painting the entire sheet green. They are irrelevant to me. The most useful one so far has been the reward number one, which allows us to get Mark for Death quite easily by killing impressives. Of course, the uh, what's his face? The middle bridge is great for the extra PVEs, and uh, the our leader consumables can be shared among other. Uh, persons of the warband I I do suppose it is useful if you know who to use what on but frankly the only person in my warband that in my opinion has any use for having consumables on him is the leader so I don't ever use consumables off of him so the only two rewards that I possibly take advantage of are one and three the rest are just it, it, the sheet looks nicer in green than in yellow. <laughs> um, I, I, can I can I do some comments? Uh, I think uh, sure. let, let let's st let's start out with uh, uh, the rank five reward here. I think uh, if I can share a little secret that I know that your Kim Tap Captain divulged to you guys, which was that uh, he recommended you all to Ainir that is recommended you all to pick uh, take away a hero whenever you're facing an. Uh, enemy team with an impressive because that hampers them more than it hampers yourself in my case that is not the case <laughs> yeah because you have an impressive so it's a little bit different i do think we need to talk about this uh, i think it's been very strong this uh, extra reward you've gotten for the impressives i don't know if your opponents have really reacted to that and tried to protect their own impressives or anything but you've had 10 10 impressive kills so far, so you've had three free marked for deaths. That's yeah, quite a lot of extra objectives for a team. I mean, that's basically, that's the best reward. Yeah, but basically, when, when you're sitting here, for, for my case, when, when I've been sitting here looking like, okay, I'm gonna lose this match, at least I'm gonna go try and kill that impressive. Uh, that's that's basically just been the, the primary objective then. If I can't win, go for the, the, the secondary. If I can't get the secondary, go for the impressive. Do, do you guys think that it's been uh, too powerful, maybe? Nope. Not at all. I, Considering I, that the remaining rewards have been kind of... With all due respect, I don't mean this. Except for Middle Bridge, the other rewards have felt as kind of, to me personally, useless. So I think it's perfectly fine. <laughs> I, I think I think it's, it's cool to have that as an extra incentive to, like, go for a specific target on the opponent. Um, we could have we could have easily just said if you kill the opponent's leader, uh, but but the impressive as being a, a a unit not everybody uses in this format uh, is, is even better because that means that the opponent is risking something bringing the oppressive to this fight. Uh, you you have gotten I mean I think it's been one of the most influential ones when it comes to objectives because you've gotten three extra objectives out of this. And compared to, for example, the Skaven, who gets double the rewards if they play on specific maps, they've also gotten three extra objectives out of that one. So it's tied for the most powerful so far. Yeah, but um, I mean, the, the Skaven one is, I wouldn't say it's easy to counter because the, the maps they get double up on are some of the maps that I like to play on. But uh, I mean, you, you can you can get around the Skaven one if you're willing to expand your deployment uh, register a little bit to more scattered. But then again, the, the, the Skaven movement will come and bite you in the ass. Yeah, the thing about the Skaven sword, I personally have not yet had the pleasure of fighting Skaven. Sad. Um, but uh, the first reward against, uh, in the case that I am picking maps, is not going to work for them because both scavengers and the cache are the type of deployment that I do not like because they have a p potential to be split into three. So something I avoid as the plague. So they are always present in the maps I veto. Chris, you, you did play Skaven. 
You, oh right, I did once. You you, pl you played Greybush in the last match of cycle one. You played Greybush. Oh right. Yeah. You, That's a you, long you time ago. Yeah, you defeated him five two. I forgot. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. Greybush. Uh, guys, are you? No. Uh, are you getting ready for the playoffs then, since you're the top-ranked team and everything? Are you excited for it? It seems you're destined to go there. I refer you once again to the uh, Filthy Frank Confused Screaming meme. I, I, I actually don't know how that works. Um, if I'm going into the playoffs, I'd say that's very undisciplined. Uh, you, the whole team is going to the playoffs uh, as it is. I, I'm going to reveal some more about about it as we get closer here i've been a bit uh, stacked up with lots of things to do and i'm trying to figure it out since some some teams have five players some teams have seven players you know how can i get everyone to be able to play and contribute but i think what we're gonna do some sort of two rounds you get two games two rounds of games and you play another team fully and objectives count for various points as well as the win and then we we'll see who tallies up more points and then they go through and win I'd also like to say that compared to the other teams, the undead team hasn't switched out players as much, and we haven't gotten new players in. Uh, so, so the team is consistent in its results due to the fact that we are the same players playing. Uh, I think sharing information with new people coming in or having new people come in with new ideas mid mid season is kind of a it, it's a little bit strange. Yeah, it can be disruptive, maybe even. Yeah, you have been a good team cohesion. Um, but I think that's yes, because you have had such a good attitude and team spirit within the team as well. You seem to all be talking about things and there's no one among you who is really silent and you're all contributing to the discussions that you're having. So I think that's a good thing for you guys. Uh, um, anything else we should say the... before we before we leave off? Do you have any okay. questions or I opinions about to anything? To share about the playoffs, I am honestly kind of concerned. Yeah. Because uh, in these matches that have been going on so far, I've been getting quite lucky, either in my match against, uh, my opponent matchups, the deployments, the deployment positionings or just random stuff within the match itself. For example, how the purifier of Yarog blew up in the game we had. And um, I am aware that luck is uh, tends to swing. And considering how much luck I'm getting right now, I'm very much so concerned that I'll be blown out of the water when it actually counts in the uh, playoffs. So that is uh, something that concerns me, which is why I'm just doing what I'm continuing to do, what I've been doing now in an attempt to keep the load going. I'm just running in, screaming, swinging a frying pan. Well, it seems to be working <laughs> pretty well, in fact. Um, all right. I mean, if we don't, we've talked quite a bit here, but it's because you've been two players as well. But uh, if there's nothing else that we that we should say, I think we just thank you both for coming. You want some general comments on the league or what? Oh, do you... yeah, if, there, if there's anything you guys want to say or suggest to everyone here in the on this video, just go. Yeah, but, I mean, um, well, be, being one of the organizers for the uh, for the Buddyhood Brawl League, um, coming over to, to the Faction Chronicle, um, I'd say the, the experience has been very different. Uh, there's a lot less defined rule set than uh, than in the the bodyhood brawl. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. I'm just saying that a, a lot of things could arise where you're you're questioning whether or not this is okay or if it's okay, why? Um, I'm I'm I, I'm one of those guys that really wants to be sure that if you do this, it's okay within the rule. Uh, like you said, re-rolling your warband at the start is that okay? Um. Stuff like that. Uh, I also really like the fact that you are checking for the the anti cheat is going around. I don't know how far you are in the process. If you even made it all the way around to all the walls, I haven't yet. I'm right now in the middle of the witch hunters team, which is the last. Uh, that, that's the fourth team I'm investigating. Yeah. Yeah. On that topic, I would just like kids don't cheat. Only losers cheat. Well. Between you and me here and all of the viewers have already heard this once, but every team has had a little bit of rules breaking. A lot of it has been 
because they didn't know or they misread the rules and such or they didn't even read all the rules but everyone has had something that we have fixed i see and, and i don't know um i th i think well it, it's been a it's been a it's been a good run tournament so far we've been cycling a lot of people in and out and and i don't know how you're you're keeping control on that or or fixing the matches so it makes sense but apparently it's working so that's awesome i think for next season um maybe a little bit tighter of a rule set maybe mm -hmm. more de more more defined rules and i don't know if you if you want to move into the whole uh, progression uh, discussion as well with the uh, warband files or or how you wanted to do that but i thought that ah. was an an interesting take on it yeah it's a, it's an interesting i, I don't think that's uh, for this video but yeah definitely i know that some of the things i've been doing a lot of talking with lots of players about is this uh, okay is this not okay what happens when this and this happens at the same time there's been quite a bit of that so we could clarify it but i also feel that it's good to have rules minimized and i think the fault of the tournament as it is if i'm reading from your critique is that i should there should be less opportunities for this kind of uh, gray areas like this should be more clear and not have so many things pop up and in case you're worried about extra workload for managing all the rules you have to write, um, you're running a tournament with, what well, ambitiously it was 50 people at the start, right? So having a couple of moderators would be great. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking about that too. In fact, I'm going to try the moderating position here with uh, Kid and Paws going to come in and uh, put in all of the games here for the uh, the last three games of cycle four because I'm gonna be in the US at the time. Yeah. Oh, that is terrific to learn. Overall commentary on my end about the tournament, um, no offense to Game Night, still love you buddy, but uh, I've kind of been liking the Faction Chronicles more than the Buddyhood Brawl League. Um, I can't quite, I think it's the team spirit, I say, because um, when you're on your own, it's uh, the environment feels a wee bit too cutthroat. It's nice to have this option that even if you win or lose, you have a, a place to go to where you'll find support, like moral support from your team. And especially if it's a team full of so many cool people like the undead team is. Mm -hmm. uh, for surprisingly, for a bunch of corpses, we are very heartfelt and warm and compassionate. <laughs> yeah, you're very jolly. Yeah. I, I'm I, grateful, I, Dad. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> I think it's hitting something specific i don't think it's this has not been this is well this has actually been a problem with all of uh, the modern community tournaments and i think for most of the body brawl tournament i think it's been for every single modern tournament which is that as the tournament progresses interest becomes less and less in the tournament and that's because people are you know they are eliminated and then they stop caring and it should be the other way around that you get more hyped and I'm hoping that, that this kind of uh, team spirit and so forth, that it actually helps to feel that, oh, good job, Bubs, on defeating your opponent and so forth. I mean, it's nice having that extra little push from all of your yeah. teammates and seeing the other teams and so forth. Most definitely. Just, and also to, having the teams also help, makes banter much more easy where you have the undead gang, the... Imp uh, like the mercenaries gang it's back and forth between everyone it's not just individuals uh and it, as a team each individual technically manages to garner some sort of following so you get uh, people more pulled in together more so with a more unified goal which again helps for interest to remain rule wise there is only one thing that i have experienced in this particular tournament that i would suggest as a change for future times Voluntary routing only available on your own turn. That is yeah, it. It has been brought up. It has been brought up in this video. I know. <laughs> um, but yeah, that is um, all the commentary I would have. A lovely atmosphere. And uh, that one rule thing. Fenrir is much better and more in depth on rules than me. <laughs> well, oh yeah. I, I can get you 17 pages if you feel like it. <laughs> <laughs> well <laughs> may, may, maybe not for the second season uh, thank you much so guys for uh, volunteering to this interview and uh, we'll be moving on with some of the other teams and uh, good luck in the playoffs I'm sure you're going to make it there 
and with the Knock remaining games as well in cycle four of course Knock on wood, and uh, thank you for having us. Uh, I am a rat. No, wait, ah, corpse. Uh, I'm a rat. Yeah, have a good one, Karen. <laughs> thank you, guys. See you. So that was Christian and V Fenrir, and we thank them. And uh, let's move on to the next team here, which will be the Cult of the Possessed. Which have been doing pretty well for themselves as well. Let's take a look here. They were the very first team actually to reach level 5. And they've been focusing heavily on the objectives. So we can take a look at the strength card here as well. Um, if we don't count the objectives here. Then they have Kid and Paul, Paranoia and Marlos. Are the, are both, uh, all three of them are top 6 players. So they have a lot of depth, uh, depth in uh, their team and if you count the objectives here for the real strength of the players they'll be doing a little bit less so the counter possessed they started off um, a little bit like a black hole here they had issues uh, with uh, getting all the team members up and together and i have got a Quite a few complaints from the Cult of Obsessed. I think overall from the entire tournament, I don't think I've gotten so many complaints and observations and stuff like that from any other more team than the Cult of the Possessed. They've been very vocal, but uh, it did turn around. They lost some players, they got some more players, and since then they've all come together and they are definitely the most uh, chatty team out of everyone. I mean, seriously, I think they talk more than the twice amount of all of the other teams. It's uh, incredible how much they can chat. You know, you miss five minutes and you have 200 missed messages in the cult chat. So um, that is it. And uh, what else to say? Yeah, what did they complain about? I mean, usually they complain about the team spirit and then they complain about that their rewards were some of the worst ones. And then they complain about the matchups and... But it's just a sign that they are very passionate, I think. And they've been doing really well for themselves. And they keep climbing and having a very fun time. And we're about to speak to the top performing player and also the team captain here, Kirimpa. So let's introduce him. Hey, hello. Yeah, this is Kitten Paw from the cult team. You guys probably know me from YouTube and Twitch. If not, please check it out. But yeah, happy to be here, man. Yeah, hi, welcome. Yeah, you should definitely go and check out his Twitch channel with all of his uh, games to get some insight on how to beat him in the tournament, as well as getting all of these casted games as well. So how, how are you doing? How, how, how do you feel that... Uh, cult team has uh, been developing from the very start you were in a little bit of a rough patch at the beginning but you seem to have ended up pretty nicely right now yeah i mean we were first to rank five so i'm very proud we've been ahead of the curve the whole time uh you just posted the matches played also pretty happy to both the teams that are on our heels witch hunters and undead have more matches than us so you could say our success ratio is the highest i would say so very, very proud of the team for that. Yeah, you're second highest, actually, besides the Skaven, um, when it comes to the amount of games. They've been playing a, a, quite a few games less than you, which is sort yeah, of yeah, all yeah. of their own fault as well, because they've been giving out a lot of uh, uh, walkovers, so they could have had the same amount of games, but they haven't. And Yeah, yeah we've, been, we've been there. Yeah, we only have one walkover, too, so... <laughs> It's been a really rock solid group of five of us. So it's very, very uh, competitive team as far as secondaries and win loss. And, and there's a lot of players that are new to PVP. So it's really cool to see that. Yeah, I talked talk a little bit about this uh, prior to introducing you. And you haven't seen the statistic yet. But uh, if you just count the win ratio and the objectives in Garden, you have uh, three players in the top six. Uh, four, five, and six, respectively, which is you, Paranoia, and Marlos. Uh, you've been doing really well there. You have a very high-end team. You're not, you're not new player have been really doing that poorly, and I think that could be due to all of the coaching and education and tactics and such that you guys do, right? Yeah, definitely. Paranoia, you guys may know from uh, the Steam forums. If anyone goes there, he's been <laughs> he's been a force on the forums, educating the. Uh, the plebs for a long time so it's great to have him as my second in command and with me making all the content and videos and being pretty active on the discord channel 
we've talked a lot about the builds and Marlos and Steiner both very involved in scouting Steiner in particular really really into scouting Marlos has been making character well you know you get in you can see our discord channels yeah but we're talking uh, for everyone now here and I do agree Steiner has been fantastic like Jackal did an amazing job for the witch hunters and for the right. whole community with the maps but real Steiner's really been putting in the effort here on scouting out exactly where all the demons stop and so forth yeah. so helping out yeah. the team you know in the, in the tactics along department better. yeah I really I really like the tactics discussion of the cult team you have a very sophisticated tone I, I noticed that you with real Steiner's scouting etc you have all of this where does the demon start? Where are my closest units? What kind of initiative do I need to beat to make the demon go towards the opponent and such? It's very, it's beautiful and very strategic. I really like it's that. It's funny lot. because I've, a lot of us have had awful luck, but it's like, hey, it's not from lack of effort. It's just bad luck. I don't know what the, you never know what a demon's going to do. So, uh, yeah. and, and then we're talking about the rank, I believe, rank four reward. Yeah. People don't, but... aren't aware of it. What do you guys uh, think about? What, what do you think of the rewards of uh, the the Call of Obsessed team? You had a little bit of a fine tuning at one point. I knew you were disappointed at the start, but uh, what do you feel about the rewards in general for the Call team? How have they been doing for you guys? I mean, I, they're balanced. I get our last one. We can kind of trump people and just take, hey, random. You're going to have to deal with it. From what I understand, it trumps everything else. You just do the full random, so it can okay. affect secondary selection. And it's just random. It's the cult, right? It's very, there's nothing, it's funny because we try to be predictive and do things, but at the end of the day, we're, <laughs> it's just the, <laughs> the randomness of cults and you take what you get and you try to make the best of it. And I think we're doing a good job. We keep talking in chat, like, why do we keep taking demons? For people that don't understand, uh, if we get a hero killed with our demons, we get a healing potion. So while it's harming us, probably, it probably is, har it's harming me. We're doing it for, for each other because we're such a strong team and to get the rewards by the end of the tournament of course at the end of the tournament we probably won't be taking demons but hopefully we can get the rewards out of it so it's a very uh random fucking team <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it, when it works it works when it doesn't it doesn't yeah you, you guys have uh, two healing drops right right now by the way so if you the rest of your players want to know they've already gotten two hero kills and so their leader can have unlimited consumables and they have two healing drops that they can distribute among their team as well exactly which is a i have i have reward. like purple healing potions too i've really just stockpiled some of my poor teammates only have blues if even so i'm really after it i, I would love to put those out on the units so yeah uh, you, you guys, as you said, you were the first one to reach level 5, you're on your way towards level 6. How do you feel that the level 3 reward has played out for you guys? The count got hot. Yeah, so I've been sitting on that. I'm, a, I'm actually about to use it against Rorator in between rounds because it's going to give me 3 PVEs, which is fun. Uh, it's a fun map. The, the battle takes part pretty damn quick. I mean, it's turn 1, usually engagements. Um, yeah. For Skaven, so I don't know how well it's going to work against fast initiative warbands. I'm probably shooting myself in the foot again, but it's more for the reward to get the extra PVE. Yeah. And I'm hoping we get the rank six, so we get another one. So we're running out of weeks here. So if we get another one, we can have two extra PVEs, which would be pretty nice. That would be really nice. You got? I don't, let's see here. I think. Uh... Yeah, this is the absolute best moment uh, in the end of cycle 3, the last game, to use the level 3 reward, as you're saying, because as soon as you finish this PvP, you will be able to play 3 PvEs in a row with the reward, and you can also hire hired swords prior to that. Exactly, Any and that's so, it's so important for the... I think that, you know, I've done these a while, I've done a lot of these. Sk I keep saying Skaven or Rough in these kind of formats, I think rank five helps them a lot because they don't have to take an assassin adept and here i'm kind of referencing the buddyhood brawl oh. leagues where they do a rank zero start but the cult is right there and like really difficult because they can't disengage and you can't really kite really well in pve you, you like if your dark soul gets tied down you especially early on you don't have a lure and you kind of just have to kill the target so you guys have been following along with me it's been a rough go and um 
So <laughs> it's it's really important with mutations. This is where I was going with this. Mutations as well. You don't know what the hell you're going to get. So being able to finally get some hired swords is something I've been building too. Now I haven't gotten any damn good ones, but uh, call it not knowing how you're going to mutate. So yeah, you you guys were one of the teams that did uh, you did the worst when we did the first statistics on uh, objectives prevented, but now you seem to be one of the best teams. Like you, arguably, depending on how many games you played, you're probably the second best team. Yeah, you are the second best team at preventing objectives. What is the success story behind that for the cult? Well, I mean, early on, it's uh, I think it's when we let up the most, as you've said, and I think a lot of it has to just do with the way the warband's constructed. Now that we've been able to get things like clawed feet and uh, different skills on board, like lure and whatnot, we're able to better protect um, and, and to get things. Like preventing crush, you can prevent crush just by taking your opponent's flag. And we've gotten a lot better at being able to do stuff like that. Hey, ability. You, I think you... a lot of people kind of camp against us too um, to win, but then they give up words down really easily, for example. So. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you have been particularly good at this. You're the only one in your team that has not given up a single objective, and you're one of the few players in the entire tournament that hasn't given up a single objective as well. I think last I heard it was me and Sassy, so I do wear that as a badge of pride. I've gotten, I think, five second. Again, we've really, really focused on secondaries. We took it as a big part of this tournament. Yeah, you and, and, uh, you and Sassy yeah. are still the only ones uh, from the very beginning of the tournament, but you still have... Some players have played quite a few games now, like Albro and King Jiggy. They also haven't let through a single objective as well. Okay, yeah. But yeah, I think I think we we're a good team. We're solid from top to bottom, and um, it's been it's been a lot of fun. I've been having a lot of fun with it for sure. Yeah, you seem to have a really good team spirit within the team. That that's for sure. Um, what what is the? Let's see here. You guys have. What do you think of the playoffs coming up? Do you think you'll make it? You seem to be destined to do that. You're ranked number two right now. And yeah, it's touch and go. I think our win-loss is affecting us a bit. Uh, ironically, we're not doing so well. I think we have the lowest win rate. I don't know. I, I know. It was above 50%, but... Yeah, yeah, you, you were fifty above 50%. You still, um, you still carry some of the... All of the players that have left your team, they don't really count anymore, but you still carry some of those um, walkovers with you yeah, and, so and, I feel and like count the worst results of course i feel like uh, just knowing my teammate i haven't looked at all the records you don't really post but i feel like we're pretty much a 50 50 or better kind of team we must be a lot of us around 50 50 um so yeah we're 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 not easy we're not hard <laughs> i don't know i think a lot of our war bands kind of end game though i, I think a lot of our stuff's going to come together with a casting leader that's always difficult yeah. that needs a lot of buffs on them and spells to get working we're finally getting the mutations in line well, i think we had a lot of advantage with the possessed early but now everyone's starting to hit rank 10 and well, you have personal. been doing pretty well for yourself. So I have this, uh, if we count the amount of objectives you've done, the amount of wins and your win ratio, and as well as the amount of objectives that you have lost, then you have more or less the real strength of the each player and the team. And in that ranking, you, Kiran Pa, you're ranked fourth out of the 35 active players right now. Paranoia fifth, Marlos tenth, Steiner sixteenth, and... Lord Raymond 18th, so you're pretty high end as far as the. I mean, all of you are more or less at the top end of the table. I can't emphasize again how proud I am of uh, the three new guys Marlos, Steiner, and Ramon. I mean, they're all new to PvP with probably one of the hardest, I think you and I would agree, one of the hardest warbands to just play PvE or PvP. So I think they're just doing a really good job taking the advice making really fun builds and being dangerous guys out there on the battlefield so yeah they have been definitely is, is there anything you, you would like to bring up about the tournament or the rules or anything specifically that you like or any suggestions or maybe just want to it, give out a taunt to one of the other teams i think it's been solid top to bottom i feel bad for if you look at the games played i understand that i feel bad about some people losing play you can't you never know what the drama is going to be Obviously, Witch Hunter 71 
it's crazy. They're they're a strong team already, and to have so many matches with so many good players. Yeah, for you to balance all this, and I feel bad that other teams have less games played. But again, I think it's the emphasis on secondaries and whatnot, and trying to play well as a team that you can kind of over. I mean, you had, you, had, you had objectives yeah, first to win second, right? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. What was, what was the question again? I kind of had another point. I'm sorry. Oh, if you had any kind of uh, opinions and about the rules yeah, or the, the tournament or uh, general. The one thing I think it's been great with the people subbing in and out, but it's been also awkward with, um, and I think they would agree to this with Lost and Slavier and other people being able to join late. I think kind of skews because they're able to do things with the warband knowing. They don't have to PvP in between. So what I'm talking about is kind of like you'll see double warlocks, and I think Slaver has four, <laughs> four casters. I heard finally two Doom Weavers and two Sorcerers, and you yeah. can kind of get away with that, knowing you won't be just utterly punished early on, and that you'll pop out really strong at PVE number ten or twelve. With you know, so that's I think, and then Slaver himself just really imbalances things. But we'll see. I mean, it's it's tough. It's tough for on you, the organizer, but. I think that's the one knock, I would say. And then there's been some confusion with when to route, but I don't think it's that big a deal. No, but I think it's been so really smoothly done enough. and very very fair and balanced in general, I'd say. It's always a bit... Do you think that's uh, something that you would do if you came in late, like building for teams? Because I'm, I'm not so sure a lot of the players that we have been there from the start that they are specifically building the team to be the best for specific rounds like throughout i mean i, 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 I know when, exactly, I, know when I play so i think it's exactly like i know personally it's weird because you're like i'm going to take this skill now to try to win now even though it's shitty later i think it in the long run where if you're like all right i know i'm going to spit out at this level so I'll wait and take the. It's it's very different. The way you develop the character is very different. I think so. I mean, obviously, you have obviously, fight. obviously, four casters kind of gives that indication. Yeah, if you're taking two warlocks, like like they would have been just utterly useless early early on, until they get the double lightnings up. You know, so it's like, yeah, I don't know. It just changes how you build things a bit. You definitely take certain skills out of order, like strong blow really early just because you happen to get an extra red. P you know, it's just no. changes the building of the characters. But it should all wash out by the end, I think. Yeah, hopefully it will. I, I haven't really given out uh, how the playoffs are going to play out, but I'm, I'm, my intention is that every single player in a team gets to play and uh, we're not going to do a kind of last man standing. It's going to be two rounds i think and we're still gonna have objectives count for something it's gonna be points you, like for instance man say that you get a certain amount of points for each objective and you get a certain amount of points for each win and then you see who accumulates most points in the matchups and that's more or less it yeah, it's a team event and i think i've put my ego aside a long time ago um that's for sure i mean i want to be doing certain tactics uh if i it was about me showcasing you know aren't i the best i can win every you know <laughs> it's a team sport and you're a team and you're a faction and you want to do the best for your faction so if that means sacrificing a victory to get a secondary that's what you do and so on if that means taking a demon that utterly destroys a flank every time just to get a healing pot well that's what you do so <laughs> you know yeah. so it may as well go out as a team you've gone in it as a team so Indeed, indeed. Uh, is there anything uh, else we should add here before we round this off uh, with this interview? Is there anything else I you just want to say? Or I mean, you have been doing a good job as a captain. Of course, you have had paranoia with you as well, and we talked about that. Uh, I do think you guys have been definitely the most talkative ones in the team chat. Probably. I just hope. Again, I, I would just say shout out to everybody. Uh, it's been every week, so I think it's been awesome to see. Uh, certain players been around a while, like Chris is doing so well, Chris Cardiac and whatnot, and to see these guys doing really well with, and I think the Swiss system has been a huge success. I've been trying to get it for a while, and I, I know some have said oh, I'm seeing similar opponents over and over, like the same player, but we see that at the top and at the middle, and I still think that's a better solution than 
rating difference, no. uh, get your ass kicked, and they're going to get the secondary without any question. So you, you think I think a, it's been a lot of competitive, fun matches. You think it's a problem to get to face the same opponent more more than once? Throughout I think it's tournament? building. I think it's kind of building. Right. I mean, we do anyway, right? <laughs> when you do a non like Swiss system, it's like the same people kind of make the finals, right? So it's like you're going to see each other. You build rivalries and. It is what it is. That's uh, you talked a bit about having it more team versus team every time, which and you know there's future tournaments that could maybe occur, but yeah. I don't know. I think I think it's it's been fine. I've I've faced the witch hunters a lot. <laughs> I think I finally faced Skaven with Albro. I've played only Undead once, so yeah. I mean, yeah, but I've it's... not seen the Undead or the Skaven. I've seen all Devotion Warband. Uh, I think I played Mercs only once. So it's all been Sisters and Witch Hunters for me. You have, you have been playing in the oh, Undead probably. ones too, man. You have. I played Bubs. I th yeah. You faced the, that was it. Yeah, you faced every single team at least once. Not all yeah, the players so I have placed, done that. I played the Undead once, Skaven once. I can't face the myself. So that's only two Destruction. I've only played Mercs once, I think. So it's been yeah. uh, all yeah. Witch Hunters. And, yeah, you, and you, have Mer you have Mercs once, Undead once. You have three Sisters, two Skaven, and then five Witch Hunters. That's your. If you count, are you, you must be counting Roarator this week. Yeah, I think it's going to be. I do. Yeah. I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward not on not on the Palace where <laughs> he's going to have like six units before me, but whatever. It is what it is. <laughs> That's going to be an interesting game, Captain against Captain. Um, That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, and he's beaten the crap out of Hole Poker twice, which is uh, really cool to see. Maybe not for Hole, but but it, I I really like these underdogs like winning. It's really fun for me. I you know again I've checked my ego at the door, so I'm really proud of Albro beating me, Sassy Dig being literally a coin flip away from beating me, Nanashi's beating me, and I and I'm not. When you're streaming, you're upset in the moment, but I'm happy for the individuals. You know, I, I'm really happy Anier could beat Clyde. I know that was probably big for him. So it's really cool to see a lot of this stuff. We I think it's crush really the cool. will, no less. So it's it's fun. To, and exactly, you got to get your motivation from your team and getting the second. You, can, you know, like when I had my first match, it's like Clyde was joking how he beat me. And it's like, yeah, but I got the secondary. You know, I was just as happy in a way. So you got to find your own victories and what sets you up for feeling good about the battle and the outcome so yeah I, th I think that's one of the nice things with the swiss system in itself that you, you, you you're focusing on you know where you are as a player as well you're facing more or less similar opponents and you're trying to do the best you can out of that and i think a lot of right. players even if they don't really realize it right now or haven't thought about it but i think a lot of them do appreciate not being uh, steamrolled over by players like yourself I think it has helped motivation I, and so, this i think is our biggest tournament and it's stayed strong i mean so uh especially considering it's every week so i i think it's been really cool to see a lot of new players we didn't know existed having a lot of fun and being interested in future tournaments learning that we're a cool cool group of dudes pretty chill and uh, it's just you know having a fun time at the end of the day with the game. So yeah, I mean I love all of the new players. They've been doing really well, and especially your own teammates as well. And hopefully, it transfers over to your own tournament that's gonna come after this one. Yeah, little, hopefully, little if you guys are out. still interested, we're doing the Battle of Behemoths probably once this is over. And it'd be cool to do a rank ten. I think it's it's dip their toes in the waters kind of thing, and maybe they're ready to try something where everything's unlocked. Um, yeah. Quick, quick fights too. Uh, they're going to be quick fights, and I, I realize scheduling and whatnot. So, yeah, it's all, theory, it's, it's all it's a problem. <laughs> anyway, uh, thank you so much, Kid and Paul, for uh, for your input, and I wish you very good luck here. You're probably going to make it to the playoffs with the team, and I hope you will do really well there. And as I say, I don't know how much we're paying you, but uh, appreciate. <laughs> Appreciate all the effort because I realize it's probably a lot off and you can't make everybody happy. Um, you can't. I'm sure you get some PMs that are like, what in the world? But you've been doing a great job and I think the cult hasn't had many peeps out of us. Um, uh, so kudos for posting it. <laughs> well, you have, you'll have to wait until you see this video in that case. Uh, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs>
<laughs> it's fun I, I, I was complaining or others. Hopefully, I think we've been pretty even. I, I just want to say as the team captain, out <laughs> on your plate, and uh, it's, you know, you're not getting comp. It's all for, hopefully, for fun for you. So thanks for hosting and doing such a good Yeah, I really love this game, and I want it to flourish. And I think we're, together as a community, I think we've done a great work with this tournament and getting more interest into the game as well. And lots of interest player, interesting players that... Uh, We'll hopefully keep playing for a long while. Well, you guys know where to find us now here on Discord or where to find our videos. So hopefully we'll see more of you guys. So thanks again. Thank you so much, Kinefa. See you on the streets of Monheim. Hopefully. All right, that was the Call of the Possessed. And I hope they will be doing well as well. Let's bring up the next topic here being the mercenaries. And they are struggling. Um, they are struggling. They have had the least amount of games scheduled. So that's part of it. They were down to three players at one point. And let's bring up their table here as well. They've had newcomers. Lost more. They've been doing really well. Hasn't really gotten any objectives yet. But keep winning the games. We have Peherat who just joined here as well. And he got uh, a mark for that for his first game. Otherwise you have the staples. You have Holpoker. You have Abaddon. You have Slainmore. And you had Granus who had... Uh, Hiatus for quite a few games, but has come back. So this team, can they catch up? That is the problem. And I don't think that for them, I think one of the main problems for the mercenaries is that they've had a lot of chances to get the objectives, but they've not really been playing well in getting the objectives. And maybe that's because of the lacking movement and having a total reliance on heavy armor and so forth, just like the witch hunters said. But we'll see about that. So I'm going to talk to Lustmother and Abaddon, who will be joining us uh, for this. Hello, uh, my name is Abaddon, um, Merc player. And, uh, uh, yep, for Factor Chronicles. Oh, and I'm uh, Lustmother. I'm also a, a player on the Mercenaries team within Faction Chronicles. Yeah, we, we we know that, guys. That's why you that's why you're here. <laughs> welcome, welcome. You you should be. Here. So the big questions I think we want to ask the Mercy teams to start off with: Can you guys catch up and get a playoff spot? What do you feel? Well, we're thinking about it, and we're working uh, really hard, and I think we are getting there. We had a great week last week uh, where I got the a crush the wheel and. Uh, we got um, uh, uh, kill target, uh, mark, for uh, mark for dead, yeah. and we got a mark for dead. So we're getting there. I mean, that was basically the best week we have had getting objectives all season. That's true, and I think it kind of marks a uh, a shift in our strategy a little bit because as as we approach what what's arguably the eleventh hour in this event, um, we're we're down at level two, whereas we have some warbands working their way into the hypothetical level six and seven. So that being the case, really, we've got a win ratio that allows us to focus almost entirely on scoring objectives more than more than actually padding a win loss ratio. And I think that uh, that shift, mm -hmm. uh, as well as the versatility of the warband, can maybe maybe carry us to level five. We're going to have to have some good games and, and a little bit of the uh, the luck that can come or not in a game of more time to uh, to carry it. But I think it's definitely within reach. But you guys fantastic win ratio, which is the second best, I think, in the entire uh, tournament so far. I mean, you have this kind of cushion for getting the objectives. And I don't think you might necessarily need level five to get to the playoffs. You might be satisfied just getting to level four. Uh, so we'll see if you can uh, manage that. I mean, you have plenty of games left. We still have the last game of uh, Cycle 3, and then you have four more games in Cycle 4. It's not impossible. I know I talked to your captain before this whole tournament, and he was saying that uh, due to your rank 4 reward, that they were gonna, you guys were going to focus hard on getting the objectives to get up there, but it didn't really pan out like that. Uh, no, I mean, uh, I know that I have had a lot of coin flips that have uh, ended up with me not getting ob the objective that uh, someone losing uh, I've tried to lock down a leader and a uh, little bit miss uh, uh, placing of units so that he falls um, 
uh, uh, all alone and dies, and therefore I <laughs> go down and don't get the uh, crush the wheel when I have the character one step away from getting it, or a uh, just getting a mark versus Albro, but I get a crit on the guy carrying the <laughs> uh, all all of the marks and I'm yeah. losing it. So. What, what, what do you guys think in general? I mean, you haven't reached level 4 yet, but what do you think of um, the rewards that you have for the Warband uh, in general? I mean, not that you have played too much with most of them now, but uh, what, do you think, what do you think of the, the strengths or is there anything you're unhappy with? And... Yeah. Oh, uh, well, go with Merv. Oh, sorry. Um, I'm pretty pretty happy with them i mean you look at you look at some groups and they have things like okay everybody can carry a firebomb or something like that but i think mercenaries are one of the only groups where you can end up putting a uh putting your uh consumables on almost everybody uh the fact that we can bring in uh bring in any hired sword at any time is is pretty nice and the flexibility there so and and especially the rank five um rank five that we get which is which is uh, we get to uh, veto more maps and and our opponent gets to veto less maps, which I think is exceedingly powerful. And so that being the case, I think our awards are uh, right on par with the most powerful rewards that anyone else has. I'm personally relatively happy with them. I can't speak for for everybody. I mean, what do you think, Abaddon? Yeah, I, I like the rewards. Uh, yes. Sad that we never get to really implement most of them. Uh, if uh, we had uh, gotten a little bit better start, uh, yeah, I think we would have had the chance. But we have also played almost uh, less amount of matches than any ones. We have had less chances uh, uh, getting. Uh, the rewards and we have had quite a cycle of players coming in and coming out so we have a hard time getting a solid foundation yeah well, you're very you're very correct there and something i was going to mention is it would be interesting to know the number of games versus the or the ratio with regards to how many how many attempts each team has had versus how many of those has translated into scoring a secondary because of course we've got the raw secondary numbers which is what things are scored upon but if a team has half as many tries but scores 75 percent of those then then arguably they're performing well they just don't have as many times at bat as the saying goes but i don't think that that's the case with us but at the same time i'd be interested in seeing if the picture looks a little better that way and oh yeah it, it it actually does for you guys you, you're not that bad and you have had it, it says that you have had the second uh, least amount of games played, but in actuality you had the least amount of games scheduled because the sisters have given up and gotten a lot of walkovers, um, so they've had more chances to play than you have. And so you have had the least. I mean, at some point you guys only had three players playing for a few rounds, so that's kind of the whole problem for you. Yeah, I know the um, and. We also we also had a lot of players come in, not play very uh, for many matches, and get out. And then it's hard to get uh, get a, a cohesive strategy going. Where they said, "All right, you have this strength, so maybe you should go and do that." When four or five matches in, people leave. What do you guys think of the team spirit in the mercenaries team? You, you you have been relatively talkative and you have been doing some tactical stuff, but uh, how how do you feel about the team in general? Mm, I would say that, um, well, I mean, of course, I can't. I don't have a window aside from anecdotal information on what goes on in other team chats. I think our team chat is at times active and at times not active at all. And so that being the case, there could just be a matter of could just be a matter of maybe maybe where we focus our conversation, because because I think we have some very decent conversations ahead of matches about what to expect out of opponents, what to expect out of teams, maybe what we can do against those teams. But at the same time, I, I think that maybe we also need to focus maybe a little more on, OK, as a team, which direction are we heading in as a team, not necessarily within your next match? And I think I think putting the focus in that direction could definitely be helpful. But I think the morale 
is is pretty good. Everybody has fun playing the game, which at the end of the day is the whole purpose of the entire event. So I think from that standpoint, we're all having a great time. Um, you know, as far as focusing more towards winning, it feels good to win, but at the same time, it also feels really good to play. So I think we're pretty happy from that standpoint. Yeah, um, I would say that we're uh, uh, having always had a, quite a big good spirit and a, a good talk in in our uh, own little separate uh, uh, strategy room. So. Uh, and that would uh, I see as one of the biggest strength of uh, the the whole tournament this uh, this team thing. Um, we have uh, starting to get in and really get some um, uh, to, get, to, get, to get, get get some connections going there. Uh, I've uh, heard that from Clyde that they have been they were quite quiet in the sisters' room, but yeah, I don't know. I really hope you guys can, you know, if, if you get uh, a little bit of a scent of victory, if you can get a crush the will now in the last game of cycle three, then you can actually catch up. You get an extra PVE, which is really important because right now a lot of the other teams, they are playing with one more PVE and a little bit more mechanical power than you guys do as well, making it more difficult to catch up. So I hope you can get that very soon. Yeah, I, I would know if, uh, uh, from my end uh, if one more PVE in my warband right now before uh, my match versus Paranoia, and all of my warband would be uh, warband players would be uh, level eight. So that's quite the difference that would make. Yeah, yeah, indeed. Uh, are there any guy, things that you guys are thinking about in the tournament so far? I mean, uh, any sort of rules or suggestions or things you guys want to voice here openly in front of all the players? Mm, I'd have to say my, my lack of experience in these events in general probably limits most of the feedback that I would have. I, I personally like the rule set. Um, I think the only major challenge maybe to to maybe improve it would be maybe some more specificity about what we can do. Like for instance, um, voluntary routing. I mean, there's been rows about that regularly in discussion. Um, and some of the other things that people can do, but maybe could be sportsmen like or not. Personally, I don't voluntary route. Some folks think it's fine. I respect both sides of it, but maybe just a, a standardized approach for things like that, which of course has, as anyone organizing anything, it's it's difficult when you have people on both sides of a camp to make that call. But at the same time, um, I see some contention around that, and maybe a little bit of contention around things like uh, like manipulating save files and things like that could necessarily. Uh, now, granted, there's not necessarily a way to prevent it, but at the same time, um, maybe maybe some thought towards more standardization and yeah. um would would definitely help out but that's all i can think of and, and of course i could i could easily speak up but it's not as easy to come up with a solution so so that being the case um that would really be the the only issues that i've seen pop up and they haven't personally affected me i personally am here to play a game i'm not here to argue about it but at the same time um i see other people doing it and i think it might take away from their their experience so that would be the main thing I would bring up, or the main the main concerns that I see in the community. Well, uh, I like the less is more uh, rule sets that we have going, uh, because uh, too many rules and too many details, and you can start to pan uh, can be, uh, to disfocus. But all right, what was the rule here again? And then you. Have to second guess and check everything instead of about all right we have simple core rules and uh it's easy to follow and i i, I see that as a strength of uh our playing sure we have had had some discussions uh but uh overall i um i like the, uh, the way the rules have been implemented I mean, yeah, I, 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 I think there's a lot of things we can do with it, of course. Uh, this has this has been an issue that's been brought up at several of the other teams in this video as well, uh, particularly about the voluntarily routing. 
not so much with the sheeting, a little bit saying it was good that we did some uh, fact checking on that. But I think that's part of the structure of the tournament. We could potentially eliminate uh, this whole uh, uh, file uh, kind of sheeting if it goes on. I think we can eliminate it, but yes, by just eliminating PVE uh, in some regard. Uh, I would say that if eliminating PVE, then you have to start uh, with fixed files at either at a certain amount uh, where you start at fixed uh, level 10 or fixed uh, uh, level, uh, level 0. With level 0, I would say, was would be too RNG uh, or oriented and uh, level 10 is level 10. Yeah. Well, but uh, a progression needs PVE to uh, go forward because only uh, PVP, then there will be a lot of uh, dam uh, damages on um, uh, units. And I, I don't think that would be fun to play anymore. I played one of those tournaments and it was harsh. I was, I was thinking more of having, you know, you have a Warband file, you play a few games with that, and then you get a new Warband file, and you can customize it a little bit yourself, but you can't do too much. And then you eliminate, you know, extremely strong options, you eliminate, you know, unfair market rotations and difference in equipment, and you have the same amount of skills, uh, more or less, than your opponent, and then you customize a little bit on your own. Something like well, that, that, maybe. That's pretty interesting because I notice um, the fact that I've played a lot of PVE and not necessarily a lot of PVP has in a way worked for me and in a way worked against me with the progression. Um, I, to be honest, am happy with uh, with any rule set as long as I know what it is going into the tournament. So so that being the case, I'd say the experience has been positive overall. Hey, it's an interesting idea to have uh, st standardized uh, Warburn files that are given out. Yeah, do you guys? I, think... I would be, I would be open for that. Yeah, I mean, it 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 is it is an idea for the next tournament. Anyway, do you guys feel that there has been is there some kind of difficulty getting the objectives with the the mercenaries uh, right now for you guys because you have been doing not too well in that regard? I mean, is there something well, that's difficult with the with the faction as it is or? Well, speaking from. Speaking for myself personally, it's my inability to do math. I would say a lack of basic arithmetic uh, abilities, uh, because because most of the times when I've fallen short has been things like I kill one extra guy and therefore it allows a route before I can finish uh, marked for death or something to that effect. Mm -hmm. um, so so three times that's happened to me. Uh, twice was definitely an issue, and then one of the times was just it was one off. So, so that being the case, part of it is experience, I'd say, because mercenaries in general are a, a relatively inexperienced team. Uh, but beyond that, there's well, at least at least some of the folks, including myself. But beyond that, I'd say, um, aside from uh, mercenaries, at least the way I've built them, they don't have a lot of uh, a lot of speed. But at the same time, speed can be overcome by good planning as well. So so I'd say really it's lack of focus more than lack of ability or a characteristic of the war band itself. It's my view. You know that you can see the amount of morale that each character is losing on the minimap when you switch between the characters? Yes, absolutely. I can. Yeah. And I, uh, I failed to do that once. And then the other two times, I just uh, got a little bit of bloodlust in the middle of the fight and uh, it came back to bite me. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I I think that I made a relatively tanky build uh, with my warband, and I was played quite uh, so I have I had quite low initiative uh, and uh, not high movement uh, on a lot of my units, and that uh, made it hard for me to get some of the objectives and. Now in the later stage of games, uh, I have gotten more of the mobility uh, into uh, the, the mobility skills that I had planned all along to get, but, but they have taken some time to implement. And now I have gotten two objectives uh, to, to much in a row. So I think that 
I had a build that didn't uh, work for making uh, doing objectives in the beginning, and uh, I also think that Mercs maybe are having a little bit of problem with that because they are tend to favor the more tanky builds. Yeah, you guys do. You, uh, a little bit of some statistics for you guys. It's uh, not perfect because late joiners like last mortars, you get a little bit of a penalty to this kind of ranking because we're counting out how many objectives and so forth and wins etc. that people have been doing. But uh, you, you, Abaddon, you ranked 11th out of the 35 players playing right now and last mortar 22nd. So that means you're second and third internally among the mercenaries. So you're, you, you have some players that can, like both of you yourselves, and then as whole pocket your captain, that can help you push through, and I hope you can do that. Uh, but you, you're not doing that bad, and this is why you have such a good win ratio as well, I think. You're generally good with denying the objectives for most of you guys. It's two of you... Slamer and Granas, they have difficulties preventing objectives, but otherwise you're doing really good in that department as well. Yeah, uh, I, I, I think I have lost one objective against me. Uh, that was, was Albro. Mm -hmm. That's all. Uh, and uh, if, uh, I think... Uh, so, uh, so I, th I think we we were in in a spot quite early on where we didn't get objectives and we didn't give them out. So we were non zone of objectives. Yeah. Well, you, you're giving out uh, uh, a few objectives, Abaddon, actually. Yeah, I got uh, Wordstone versus Paranoia also. Yeah, you're giving out four objectives in total. I have. Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, let's round this off, guys. Uh, is there anything else you guys want to add to the tournament? You're speaking to all the other players. Just give a taunt. Maybe say that you're going to catch up to the Skaven or whatever else you want. Any kind of opinion or comment on anything? Yeah, I, I say that uh, the rats have had the fun and uh, they are falling down. And anything from you, Last Mortar? Ah, I, th I think we might have lost him. Uh, all yep. right, thank you very much, guys, for talking to us, and uh, I uh, hope that you can do well in the in the coming games. Good luck to yep. you. Yeah. Thank you, Mark. Thank, thank you so much. Thank yep. you. See you around. Yep. So that was the mercenaries players trying to catch up here and uh, let's go on to the very last team that we have being the sisters of Sigmar. And there we go. So the sisters of Sigmar of course they are in the last place right now and it uh, looks a little bit hopeless from that. I mean they could have a good run and maybe get uh, a crush or two here but Realistically, the player that's pulling the weight here is, of course, Clyde, who's been doing pretty well for himself, picking up uh, most of uh, these objectives as well as the only crush that they have managed to get. And um, we don't really know if Shellproof is coming back. He's in a hiatus right now for the team. Maybe he comes back, maybe not. Uh, it's a little bit of a dispute there. And uh, I think they do really need him. And Clyde said as well the same. I think. For the Scissors team, it seems to be that uh, I think they have been a bit unfortunate. I have to say that they, Clyde was the only player that got to pick uh, another. Uh, was the only player that got everyone got the chance to pick uh, a teammate if they wanted one, if they specifically wanted to play with someone. And the only one who actually did was Clyde picking up Shellproof, who I think has been uh, not doing too well compared to the other rank two seeds. Uh, I think he is actually somewhere down the middle of the pack, but uh, in general I think, they, like with the mercenaries, the sisters really need to try and get objectives and they have not really focused that. I've seen a lot of these games and they, 
they didn't really pick crush the will in the beginning when they had when most players uh, tried for crush the will and instead they tried for mark for that and worse than rush and they still failed that and in some ways they played very defensively in some places they play very offensively it's been all over the place and I think it's a little bit unfortunate with the sisters team as it is and I think that's because they seem to be lacking a bit of team spirit right now and I know Clyde has been doing a good job as a captain he's been berating some of the players and being congratulating some of the players depending on how, how it's going and it's trying to be a good thing and it's not about Clyde here he's been doing I mean he's tried he's, he's really tried but uh, he's not gotten too much out of it the the chat is still they're still talking along but they're definitely the most quietest chat there is and it's not much going on in the way of tactics or strategy unlike the other teams so can they catch up i'm not so sure that they can they got voland coming in here and we'll see if he's gonna be a really good choice for the team uh depending on how much he's been playing hopefully shellproof can come back and help out with the team as well but there is a tall order for the for the sisters team right now and uh, i hope that all of these players they do sign up for the next tournaments coming up and they don't view this as uh, a failure i think a lot of the other teams they've having really fun and a, go a good team spirit to be supporting each other and uh, even if there's been some of that for the sisters team i hope that uh, they feel that there is this feeling in the tournament that they, they can be part of that in the next tournament and hopefully even for the last cycle here of this tournament so we'll see how they do uh obviously well, let's see here they're doing Clyde is ranked 12th shellproof 17 jarok and storm raven and then volan and under 93 and um, at least it's good that most of these players are trying to play their games they are organizing their games and uh, yeah, I don't really know what is too much else to say. As a sort of sign here, I tried to get one of the sisters players to put up for an interview, but it just wasn't happening. None of them really responded, or the few that did had no time right now. So kind of symptomatic here of uh, the team in general. So I don't think we will see a sisters team in the playoffs, but I hope they will have a lot of uh, fun games coming off and uh, that you have fun playing against them. A lot of them have pretty wacky builds and we will see, interesting to see what they can do now that they get to hire more hired swords. Um, thank you all for watching in uh, all of, throughout this whole video, it's uh, over two hours now and I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, might do a little bit of a talk before the playoffs or during the playoffs we'll see how that's gonna turn out and uh, what kind of uh, uh, rules we will have for the playoffs in general it's gonna be more or less what i've said throughout this video a few times with the questions asked but uh, yeah um i think that's more or less it i you have sat through this whole two hour video and let's just end on a good note and uh, thank you so much everyone for listening through this thank you for all of the support on all of the chats and the, the really good community feeling that we all have got going and i hope that everyone feels that it's not just about you as a player or even your team but the whole community and that we're doing this to have fun among ourselves and uh, just enjoy the game for what it is and uh, no matter what else happens so thank you so much and uh, see you in the streets of Mordheim everyone and uh, good luck in cycle 4 farewell for now